Hello, I'm Dina Howard with Dina Howard Portrait Design in Murphy, North Carolina. You can find me online at www.dinahoward.com. And I'm going to do a quick little composite retouch. Um, this is a newborn I shot a couple months back. And I'm currently in Lightroom 5. And we're going to just jump right into this. Um, I've got two images that I pulled from this session. Um, it's the cute little chin on the hands pose. And in this one, I have mom holding the hands here. In the next one, I have mom with her finger just to the side of the head. Um, I always have mom keep her fingers on top of the head. And then as soon as I'm ready to shoot, I count to three. She pulls her fingers up and puts them back down. So this is how we got this shot. And um, the first thing I'm gonna do, these are straight out of camera. I do shoot in raw. The first thing I wanna do is a custom white balance. The easiest way for me to do that is to grab this dropper tool here. We're gonna grab it and click on the widest part of this image, probably this little spot here. And that pulls a lot of the magenta out. Um, I'm probably going to put just a little bit back in, and I'm going to warm it up just a little bit. And then I'm going to pull my saturation down just a tad. I'm going to pull my contrast down, which softens the image quite a bit. And then I'm going to pull my highlights down. If you need to, you can always pull your shadows up just a little bit. I think I'm going to. I like that. Um, and then if you'll hold down your Alt key, click on your white slider. If you go up, It'll show you where your whites are getting blown out. I'm going to come back down to where I have no blown out areas. And that's what that looks like. And then your blacks, you can do the same thing. Pull it up just to where you see no areas of black. And that gives you pretty good contrast right there. I'm pretty happy with that. You can see the before and after if you click on the um, two Y's that are side by side down at the bottom. Um, the picture on the left is what we started with. The one on the right is where we're at now. You can tell that it's quite a bit warmer. Um, we've got baby sitting on a little um, wet pad. He had had an accident, so we had to put that under him. So. We'll be taking that out once we pull that into Photoshop. I'm going to go back to my full image. And then I'm going to take the next image. I want that to match this one to get a good composite. So I'm going to select both of those. If I hold down my Shift key and just click on my next image, it will select them both. Then I'm going to click on my sync here. I'm going to check all and synchronize. Okay, now we are pretty consistent in those. Now I'm going to take both of these and right click, edit in, um, and I've got mine set for Adobe Photoshop CC 2014. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It's going to pull both of, both of those images into Photoshop. And I'm on my crop tool. Okay. This is the image that I really want to work with. Um, really, all that I need to do with this image is to get Mom's hand out and to retouch out this. Um, little wet pad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this image 
and I'm going to pull that right over on top of that one. Now obviously these don't match up. The heads are in different positions and I was actually a lot closer to baby in this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the opacity just so that I can see the other image behind that. I'm going to do a Command T if you're on a Mac. It's Control T on a PC. And then I'm going to hold down my Shift and my Alt key. And I'm going to drag that in. And reposition. Zoom in just a bit. Really what I want to match up is this side of his head. I'm not really worried about anything else because all of that's going to be gone. Okay, there is the top of his head. I'm going to need to turn it just a little bit. And that's looking good right about there. I'm going to hit enter to accept that crop. And then I'm going to set my opacity back up to 100%. Now, I want to get rid of everything in this top photo except for this part of his head. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to apply a layer mask. If you'll look in the bottom right hand corner of your Photoshop window, um, there's a square with a circle inside of that. If you will click on that, that will add a layer mask, sorry about that, to this top layer. When you add a layer mask, it automatically adds it um, as a white layer mask, which is show all. If you'll hold down your command key and press I, then it will hide the complete photo. Now what I want to do is I want to paint his head back in here um, because we have no hand there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a white brush. You can press B for brush. Make sure your top layer is set to white. That's your brush color. Make sure you're at 100%. Quick little shortcut for that, if you'll hit the zero key, it automatically sets it back to 100%. I'm going to up my brush, and I have a soft brush. And then I'm just going to paint mom's hand out of this image. And I'm going to do as much as I can. And that looks like it's pretty good. I can turn that off and back on. And you can see how we did that. Now I'm going to go ahead and flatten these layers. So I have set a keyboard shortcut. I can hold down Command and F and that will automatically flatten. I use that um, menu option quite a bit. So I went ahead and set a custom keyboard shortcut for that. You can find that under Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts. And that command is actually under the layer menu. So if you'll click layer, go all the way to the bottom of these dialogs, flatten image, you can add a shortcut. If you'll click add shortcut, hold down your command or control button and the F and then tell it to accept. It will give you a um, a little error that says that that shortcut is applied to another function in Photoshop, um, you can go ahead and overwrite that and go ahead and accept that anyway and that'll set that to um, flatten image. So anytime you need to flatten you can just use your command and F and that will take care of that for you. I'm going to cancel out of that because I've already got it set. Now we're going to go ahead and um, try to go ahead and get rid of mom's hand and I'm going to do that just by using the clone stamp tool. Your mode is going to need to be at normal and 100%. You're going to need a pretty big brush. So I'm going to hold down my Alt key, go 
click there, and then I'm going to brush over top, okay? I'm going to move that just a little bit. Um, up here at the top, set that to current layer. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to go here, hold down my Alt key, click. And I'm going to go across there, here. I'm going to do that all the way across. And then the best way to get rid of this is if you'll hit your selection tool up here, make sure that it's in the right rectangle. I'm going to select probably from here over. I'm going to hold down my command key, hit J, and that's going to bump that to a new layer. You can see that. Now I'm going to do a Command T, which is a transform, and then if you'll right click on that, and you can flip it horizontally, and then you can just move that over. And I might want to keep this little leg in there. Match it up here at the bottom. And just a little bit. I'm going to lower the opacity on that just to get a good lineup for that. This leg is about right there. Put it back to 100%. And I'm going to pull that in even more and down. And I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Then I'm going to go ahead and just erase here. I'm going to go right around that foot. Probably need to zoom in quite a bit. And if you'll go back to your history panel, you can go back before your eraser. Click there. That will set your history brush back to that point. Click on your bottom layer again. Then you're going to go over here and grab your history brush. If you'll click on that, and you can make it very small. Make sure it's at 100%. Let's try about 50%. And then I can bring it right on there and get that. Um, I'm going to need to do just a little bit of work here. And I'm going to do that with the clone stamp. I'm going to make it really small. I'm going to select here. I'm going to line it up. Hold down. Click there. I'm going to make it up. Just paint in there just a little bit. Oops, a little too much. Go about 20%. On that. I'm going to zoom back out. That looks pretty good. Now I can go ahead and continue to fill this in over here. I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. 
I'm going to get my clone stamp tool at 100%. And I'm going to go ahead and just roughly put this in. I'm not going to worry about blanket wrinkles or anything right now. ahead and get these blanket wrinkles out. Now I'm just using the clone stamp tool at 100%. Lower my opacity to 60%. I'm just going to go right around the top of his head, being really careful not to paint over the top of his head. looks pretty good to me as far as the composite goes. I'm going to blend this just a little bit. I'm going to alt click there. I'm still on my clone stamp tool. Fill that in just a little bit. Even the background out just a bit. Okay now I need to let me fix the blanket over here. Blend this. Just along the edge. Do the same thing on this side. All of this work I'm doing with the clone stamp tool. I'm set on about 80% right now. Pretty good. Um, now I'm going to do a blanket fade. I'm not going to use an action for this. Um, I normally do, but I'd like to show you how it looks without an action. Um, what we're going to do is duplicate the layer. So you'll hold down Command, press J. That duplicates your layer. Now what I want to do is go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to blur this quite a bit um, to where I completely lose all texture in the background. That's pretty good. I'll say OK. And then once again, I'm going to apply a layer mask to that. And then I'm going to paint over. I'm going to go ahead and invert that. Click on the layer mask, hold down Command, press I. That will invert it. That hides everything that we just did. Then what I want to do is go in with a 50% white brush. And I'm just going to brush over this blanket in the background. All I'm doing is brushing this blur right back on. We were blurred pretty good around baby's head, so I want to be really careful there. I'm going to go up to 100% and then just go around the edges. That's faded pretty well. I'm 
I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. And then I'm going to do a new blank layer. Your blank layer, transparent, is the square box in the bottom right hand corner. It looks like a little sticky note. If you'll click on that, that's a blank layer. And then I'm going to go ahead and get a paintbrush. And I'm going to hold down my Alt key. I'm going to accept this color. I'm just going to click on it. That will give me that color. And then I'm lightly going to paint over this at about 40%. And it's really going to smooth all that out. Not worrying about the baby at this point. And what I like to do is just kind of curve down. Um, I use a bean bag and I like to mimic the shape of that bean bag in my fade. And then at about 20% opacity, I'm just going to go around the bottom of this just to soften the edge of that just a little bit. Now if I turn off my bottom layer, you can see um, barely where I've painted on that just to blend it. Turn that back on. Now I'm just going to go in and I'm going to erase off the baby. And I'm not going all the way to the edge of the baby. You can go in and you can get very meticulous with this. Um, I don't, typically. I go almost to the edge of baby with my eraser. Um, you can zoom in if there's some spots that you need to get, usually around the ears. hands, the shoulder, okay, that looks pretty good, that's before, that's after, I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. Now I'm going to straighten my image. So I'm just going to press my C key, which will give me a crop. Um, I'm going to delete all these numbers at the top, um, and I'm going to do my own crop. For this pose, I would like to center my image. And then I'm going to straighten it up. It needs quite a bit of straightening, it looks like. Um, that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and accept that crop. Then I need to go in and fill in where I've cropped. Again, I'm going to do the clone stamp at 100%. And it's got that cleaned up and straightened. Now, this is what we started with, and at this point, we're here. This is where I'm going to go in and go ahead and start doing the retouches on baby's skin. The first thing I want to do for that is go ahead and edit out, I'm sorry, where's baby? There he is. I'm going to zoom in pretty well. If you look down here at the bottom, this is 100%. I'm zoomed into 100%. That means um, when you print this, this is what you're going to see. So any of these little bumps um, and flaky spots, I'm going to go ahead and want to take those out. I'm going to get my 
spot healing brush here. And then I'm just going to go through and paint over those. And he has a little scratch right here. That's pretty common with newborns. And then he's got a little bit of redness here. What I want to use for that is the clone stamp tool. I'm going to set it to 20%. And then under mode here at the top, I'm going to go down to lighten. And then what I'm going to do is hold down my alt key. I'm going to click right below that. And then I'm going to go up and just brush over it a few times. And then it takes care of that redness. Same here. And then I like to do the same thing on this little crease under the eye. And I just go over that a couple times. It lightens that right up. Lighten that shadow just a bit. And then I had my light coming in from this side, so I have a little bit more shadow on the nose right here. Um, I'm going to lighten it just a little bit, just because it's a little bit darker than the shadows on the side of his face. If it matched that, I wouldn't worry about it at all. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click here, Alt-Click, and then I'm going to brush over that one time. That's all that's needed. And zoom back out. Um, that's pretty good as far as cleanup goes. You can see where we started with that. I'm going to go ahead and set my snapshot there. And that retouch. So we can go back up to that. Here's my retouch. And then before and after. That's looking pretty good. I went ahead and did this on my background layer. Um, I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> um, I should have duplicated this layer and done my retouch on that. I didn't. Um, you can. The next thing that I want to do is um, soften the skin just a bit. So I'm going to go in almost like we did the blanket fade. I'm going to duplicate my layer. And I'm going to go to Filter, Blur. This time, I want to choose Surface Blur. And you have to be really careful with this one because it can really make the skin look plastic. Um, I'm going to pull both these sliders down. The first thing I want to do is pull my radius up very, very small bit. And threshold up to about three. That looks pretty good to me. Let me tell it OK. And then I'm going to apply layer mask. I'm going to invert that so that you don't see it at all. Choose my brush tool on white at about 50% to start. And then I'm just going to go in and brush on the skin. I'm using my left bracket key to lower the brush size. And then I'm just painting over the parts of the skin that would be smooth anyway, such as the cheeks and the forehead, the chin, and then right above the mouth. Um, you want to be really careful. Don't get this near the lash line, the nostrils, or the lips. Um, it looks very obvious that you soften the skin when you do that. This still leaves a lot of texture in the skin. And we're going to need to darken this leg down, obviously, because it would have been in shadow to match this. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. Then I'm going to get my lasso tool. 
actually let's get the magnetic lasso tool. If you'll right click on your lasso tool here, um, you can go down and choose magnetic lasso tool. You can also hold down your shift key and hit the letter L and it will toggle between those. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to set my feather pretty high. I'm going to set it mm, about 20%, 20 pixels. And then I'm just going to go around this way. I'm going to bump that to a new layer so that you can see all that's on that layer is his leg. It's got a very good feather around the edge. So the change I make in this is going to fade gradually to the edge. And then I think what I'm going to do is go to Image, Adjustments, Exposure, and I'm going to bump the exposure down on that just a little bit. Oh, too much. I want it to match up to his arm. So I'm going to up the gamma correction just a bit. Tell it OK. And then you can see the before and after. I pulled it down quite a bit. That looks a lot more natural because of the shadowing on this side. Um, I'm going to flatten that. And I see a small area here where I had. I'm going to lighten this up. So I'm going to choose my clone stamp again. I'm lighten at 20%. I'm going to click here, and then I'm just going to go over that. I'm just going over his little toes. It will soften that line considerably. shadow here. I'm not going to completely get rid of it, but we are going to lighten that just a bit. And then if I look in my history window, I can go back up to the top where I set that snapshot. I can get my recovery brush. I'm going to zoom back in, and I'm going to paint this back where I had added that. Make sure it's on 100%, and then where I went over that, I'm just going to paint that back in just a little bit. Okay, at this point, you could leave this edit um, as is. This would be a clean edit for me, um, but I think that I would like to add a little warmth to this. So I'm going to go ahead and, first thing, I need to take care of these little red toes. So I'm going to get my lasso tool, and I'm going to go around his little feet. Let's try that again. And then if I hold the shift key down, come to this side, I can select this side separately. You have to hold your shift key down the whole time. And I'm just tapping all around this. And that selected both little feet. I'm going to bump those to a new layer by holding down Command J. And then the best way I know to get rid of um, red in baby skin is to go to Image, Adjustments, Color Balance. Now there's a shortcut key for this. Um, you can hold down Command and B, and it'll pull up your color balance window. So what I want to do is match his feet um, 
more to the town in his arms and legs. So I'm going to pull the red down just a little bit. You have to be really careful. Um, if you go too far into cyan, it's going to start looking gray in the shadow areas. So you're just going to want to pull that down just, just a little bit to pull the red out. And then we're going to add a little bit of yellow. And that looks like that matches up pretty good. We're going to say OK. And then we're going to do a quick curves adjustment to lighten those just a little bit. Um, you can go to Image, Adjustment, Curves, or once again, you can use the shortcut key, hold down your command, control on a PC, the letter M, and that will pull up your Curves dialog. Now what I like to do is just um, grab a point right in the middle and pull that up just a little bit. And that looks pretty good there. I'm going to say OK. And you can see the difference in the feet there. I'm going to flatten that. And now I'm ready to do a color adjustment to the entire image. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my layer again. Command J. Once again, I'm going to use my color balance. So I'll hold down Command B, which will pull this up. And um, the baby to me is still just a little bit too red for my taste. So I'm going to pull that red down just a little bit and I'm going to add a little yellow. And that looks pretty good to me. Maybe just a bit much, so you can lower the opacity on that layer. Um, about 60-70% looks good. I'm going to flatten again. Then we'll go into Image, Adjustments. Um, let's see, I'm going to go into Hue and Saturation. I'm going to pull the saturation down just a little bit. Then I'm going to go to my curves again, and I'm going to pull the whole image up just a little bit, add some brightness. I'm going to say OK, and that would be done. Thank you for watching.